Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and this is the all-new Fractal Design Vector RS. It's a case that shares a number of similarities with the Fractal cases that came before it, but with a radical new look on the outside. If you're wondering where all the right angles went from this case, well, apparently Fractal is hoarding all of them for their new logo. The top and front panels have been completely reimagined, and I have to say I absolutely love the aesthetic they're going for here. The contrast of the matte black front panel with the deep gloss tempered glass next to it is fantastic. Between the two surfaces is a very thin addressable RGB bezel, which helps further define that separation. It's a killer look and reminds me of what I would think of if I found a gaming PC on an Imperial Star Destroyer. The top panel has a fully redesigned I.O. as well, but retains the standard fare of USB, audio, power and reset buttons, and a USB Type-C connector. The feet have also received a full makeover, replacing the faux chrome stubs from a lot of the previous Fractal Design cases in exchange for some faux aluminum braces. Overall, the case is solid as a rock on these new feet, and I am very much a fan of all the external changes I found on this case. Internally, this case is going to be very familiar to any fans of the Fractal Design Define R6. That is a case in particular I am very familiar with, as I used it in a case for a modding contest last year, and you can click right up here if you want to see that epic build video. Most of the features from the Define R6 made their way into the Vector RS, but there are a couple of notable changes. Like the Define R6, the Vector RS is incredibly versatile, allowing you to completely customize the internal layout of the case to suit your needs. If you're looking for a case that can hold a metric crap ton of hard drives for a home server, but don't want to go with a full rack mount chassis, the Vector RS holds 11 3.5 inch hard drives and 4 2.5 inch SSDs. The Vector does only come with 6 3.5 inch trays and 2 2.5 inch trays, so if you want more, you'll need to order them from Fractal's website. But given how scarce cases with multiple drive trays are these days, this is one that should be on your shortlist if you're building a home server or are just a storage junkie in general. On to the changes from the R6, and the Vector RS is a brand new chassis from about here up. Gone is the pop-in, pop-out dust filter, instead being replaced by a tempered glass panel, with the vents moved to the rear of the case. At least, that's the default setting. The tempered glass is going to help keep your system quiet, but may not be the best option for high-performance builds. But, lucky for you, tempered glass is not the only option that's included in the box. The top panel is completely replaceable with a slotted fan vent and filter, allowing you to choose between silence with the tempered glass or go for all-out performance with high airflow or water cooling setups. The thing that say the same is all of the modularity you find in the Define R6 you will also find in the Vector. In the out-of-the-box configuration, called the Storage Layout, which is what I have this in right now, the Vector will support up to a 360mm radiator on both the top and the front of the case, with support for a 280mm rad on the bottom if you feel the need. Moving the storage panel to the rear of the case into the open layout removes your drive trays, but opens up the top to support a 480mm radiator, as well as a lot more room for pump and reservoir combos. The Vector supports ATX and EATX motherboards and graphics cards of up to 440mm long. For my Vector RS build, I decided to resurrect my video editing machine, which I haven't used for about the past two months now. It's got an MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard and a Threadripper 1900X 8-core CPU, which feels woefully inadequate now that the Ryzen 3700X and 3900X are on the market. But I digress. In my previous case, I had a number of issues with water cooling support because of the layout of the Inwin 303. I've wanted to move back to air cooling for quite some time, but I've never got around to it because I needed the system to be up and running 24-7. Now that I've switched cases, I decided to go back to air cooling thanks to the 185mm heatsink clearance in the Vector RS. The Cooler Master MA621P for TR4 was one of the best overall coolers I tested on the X399 platform, but the 165mm height makes it a bit of a tight fit in most cases. There is plenty of room for it inside the Vector though. Of course, as soon as Threadripper 3 is released, you know I'm going to go back to a full custom loop. There are a number of other little touches in this case that I've come to expect from Fractal as well. An integrated fan hub with support for up to 7 fans, 3 GP14 fans included in the case, and second only to Inwin for their packaging and presentation when getting the case out of the box. Seriously, individual baggies for each kind of screw is a huge time saver when building a PC. Cable management was a snap, with well laid out runs and a number of convenient tie downs. Fractal even pre-routed the majority of the front I.O. cabling where it needs to go in the case. And unlike my one complaint about the Meshify S2, with the USB-C cable being a little bit too short to be properly routed in the case, this time it's able to reach just about anywhere on the right or bottom side of the motherboard tray. 
The Vector RS does support vertically mounting your GPU with the optional Fractal Design riser cable, and given how great the GTX 1084 The Win looks, it's definitely the way I was going to go. The Vector does support up to two slot GPUs air cooled in the vertical mount, and does seem to have enough clearance to keep the air flowing around it. Running Heaven Benchmark on the 1080, it peaked at only 78 degrees Celsius and maintained a 1925 MHz boost clock throughout. Speaking of temperatures, the CPU also fared quite well in this case, peaking at just 72 degrees Celsius under a full synthetic load with that MA621P cooler. This is with a set of Fractal Prisma AL12 fans mounted to the top with the tempered glass panel still in place. Switching the glass panel out for the vent had no effect on GPU temps or clock speeds, but it did bring my CPU down about 5 degrees Celsius to 67, which is right in line with where the cooler tested before on an open test bench. One thing to keep in mind though, when I swapped out that glass panel for the vent, the system was significantly louder. Personally, I'm going to rock the tempered glass panel in this build as I always prefer silence over speed, and frankly, it just looks awesome. The Fractal Design Vector RS is available today for $179 with either a clear or dark tempered glass side panel. For the feature set and flexibility of this chassis, I think that is absolutely a fair price. If you have been a fan of the Define R5 or R6 cases in the past, the Vector RS is certainly one to keep an eye on. It keeps all of the versatility and storage options of its heritage, but with a nice modern facelift. If you are interested in picking up a Fractal Design Vector RS or any other parts from this build, you can follow the links down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you're interested in directly financially backing the channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon. A minimum donation of $1 gets you access to my exclusive Discord server. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Today's beer is from Kells Brewery. It's their Nitro Irish Stout, and it's probably the lightest stout that I've ever had at only 4.2%. Boy, that is certainly very light-bodied. Wow. You get what tastes like it's trying to be a coffee roast in there. You end up with more of like a, a milk-like flavor, and uh, it tastes like a latte. That's interesting. A couple of drinks into this. I'm not enjoying this all that much. Like I said, it doesn't really taste like a beer. It tastes like 2% milk with a little bit of coffee, very much like I would find in, in a latte. I mean, it tastes like steamed and foamed milk. Um, there's not a lot of beer flavor to this. There's not a lot of stout flavor to this. Um, I think it's a valiant effort and I and I appreciate, you know, them trying to do something with nitro and, and try to make a lighter bodied stout. I, I feel this one's just missing the mark though. I'll give it this, at 4.2%, this is a pretty easy drinking beer, especially for a dark beer. But I'm just not enjoying the flavors that are in there. They're just a little bit too subdued and too watery in my opinion. Uh, honestly, had they called this a porter, I probably would have gone in with some different expectations, but they called this a stout. And so I'm expecting big, bold, deep, dark flavors to it. And that's just not what's in here. I will say for a nitro, the head dissipated a lot faster than I expected it to as well. And there was no cascade effect after I poured it. Uh, it's not the best nitro, it's not the best stout. It's a decent beer at 4.2% and a lot better than a lot of light beers that you'll find in this range. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's fine. If I run untapped, this is a, a 2.5. It's, it's good, but it's certainly not great. It's certainly not one that I'm going to buy over 30 other beers in a tap house. But if this is my only dark beer option and I feel like a dark beer, I think it would do just fine.